question for this speaker. Peter, thank you very much for your talk. Thank you, Michael. Uh, our next speaker is, and being a Yankee, I'm being challenged here, um, Tur Turdborn Vilberti. Uh, yeah. Close enough? Or, or Ken to help you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, you want to give it a try? No? Okay. Um, Turdborn is from the uh, University, uh, Umeå University in Sweden, and will be speaking to us about the electronic identity, uh, I guess it's electronic identity management in Swedish universities. He is the chief information officer at his institution and uh, an assistant professor of computer science. Sir Bon. Thank you. Not yet. Okay, we'll wait and see. That's better. There is some kind of misunderstanding here. I only have a PDF, so it will take some time before, before to move it between the different slides here. Yes. Okay. Footnote. Let me just uh, maybe I put this to 400. Uh, yeah, real quick, if you go to window and full screen mode. Okay. I have to move and navigate by hand here, you know. Uh, not a good solution, right? <coughs> Put it in 400. That's, that's good. We'll do it that way. No, that doesn't no, work. Doesn't work okay. You have, to, you have to leave it at right, 400. Right here. Okay. This is it. Okay. Okay, that's, that's fine. Yes, I, I have a rather short history in, in this business of authentication and authorization. I worked with it since 1999, and the first thing I decided, discovered was that it was quite difficult to find information of the standardization issues. And um, the formats and the is, is, as far as I understand, basically standardized by ISO and the protocols by IETF, but the services were not easy to find some, somewhere. So. It, it was really a rather difficult task to start off with. Uh, what my, my interest is in, in uh, or my focus is on the electronic identities needed for an information society and the question who shall issue them and how strong do they need to be? And that of course depends on what you want to do. So uh, th this is anyhow my, my, my uh, the starting point. This would take some time, unfortunately. And uh, we have heard that the electronic identities are of different types, and I will not go into very much to this here again then, so just move on. They are not foolproof anyhow, and you have to kind of kind of somehow keep control of the, the amount of risk you take when you use an electronic identity. And uh, my what I have observed and the basis for the need to work with electronic identities from my point of view is there are two general trends. There is a large increase in self-service applications, self-service parts in our IT applications and there are non-specialist users that are involved in electronic workflow that we have in our institutions. And this trend, trend tends to make all our students and all personnel users of the large IT systems. Like for instance, the travel expenses. You're expected to put in the information needed to get your travel expenses covered yourself instead of having a secretary that does it or a central, or a central uh, administrator that does it at the university. And we have s the student records where the students nowadays are expected to f keep their information about their address, for instance, current and they are supposed to sign up for courses and ask for, for excerpts from the excerpts from the records and so on. And the personal portals is another area where the, we need these identities. 
And it's, of course, irrational to maintain them separately, so that's, that's one of the reasons. And then, the, when it comes down to thinking about the strengths of the electronic identity, it's, of course, not only the technical issues, it's as much the manual routines around these technical issues that determines how strong an electronic identity is. And for instance, how you manage the account meta information and how, how you bind the electronic identity to the individual and how you protect the secret part of the, your, your credentials and how it is stored and so on. So there is a mix of manual and automated procedures and you have to kind of somehow declare the policies you use when, when it comes to these, these, these issues. I believe that is rather important. And uh, what, what you, you see and what also Peter talked about is that there are at least two different types of electronic identities you want to use. And one is, is where you bind the identity to an email address, for instance. And the other is where you bind it to uh, the identity of a person. And in Europe we have a third uh, level as well, which is these qualified certificates. And I don't think there is much need for them in our business right now anyway. So it's these two that are interesting for us and we want to use both of them. And if, if a certificate authority is involved, that the, its responsibility is to issue a certificate that states the, the, uh, how, how you have positioned yourself around these issues. Let's see now what this was. I don't want to say anything about username and password, but of course there is the same kind of issues here, there. If you're using a PKI if to, to manage your certificates, then you build a structure and it's easier to use. And uh, mostly it's, it's the trust issues that are easier to handle. You don't have to study the individual certificate, of course. You have to study the PKI instead. And uh, this is partly done by doing a good work when you write the certificate policy or the practice statement. Uh, so these, these documents and presents the, these both manual and automated procedures that you use when you work with the electronic identities. This is not very easy. With, with the PKI in place, we can, of course, then bind user accounts and use this for, for, for coupling authorization attributes to the electronic identity, as we have heard earlier here. And uh, we work then in, in, in Sweden with an authorization system that you will can hear more about later on in this conference, Spock B. And, uh, we believe very much in that one. And arriving at this position that we need these two levels of, of of uh, certificates, uh, these two levels of authentication, and and we need an authorization system as well. Has been kind of a journey. In '99, I believe, we would organize this PKI business all, all our, ourselves, as a, in in the Swedish higher education PKI work that has been up and running now for a couple of years. And uh, when working with that, of course, we realized that there is need to communicate with the society as well, and it would be much better if we had a citizen's certificate in some sense. And uh, we took part, and a colleague of mine and myself, in the uh, procurement that the government assigned to the tax authorities to, to provide citizen certificates for the government authorities in their in cooperation and in co communication with businesses. And uh, during that process, we realized that there is really not one way of doing e-government. The resulting business model from that procurement was that uh, they have a business model where they charge per check in the revocation list. And that is, of course, not 
we, we can't accept that. It's used for, uh, use, useful for infrequent contacts between the citizens and the authorities, and we want to use it for, for, for locking up, the unlocking doors and signing for exams and whatever. And the charge we have to pay through the banks in this sense is, in this, in this situation, is the appropriate amount of the stamp on one letter per check in the revocation list. And that is okay for the governmental authorities that has a contact, for instance, once a year or twice a year with the, with the citizens, but of course not for, for us using it more, more frequently. And there is also, in this model, you have to have a contract with each of the certificate service providers. And there is four or five of them. So we as a university has then to have a contract with each one of these. And there is this kind of a starting fee for... At, uh, for, for that contract, and then there is the additional fee for checking the revocation lists. So, for instance, we have in, in Umeå a, a very small governmental authority where it works three or four persons who protects the interests of the offers of criminal offenses, and they would then have to, them in their business, have these, these contracts with all these certificate service providers in order, in order to, be able to, to be able to use this these uh, identities in their communication with their citizens. And that is, of course, also completely unrealistic. So, so the business model is not acceptable. And uh, the government had, up till just recently, believed that the tax authority had solved our, all our problems with the electronic identities. But for the, for the tax authorities, it works OK. We have had now, this, this spring, electron possibilities to electronically file our tax return reports. And I believe there is uh, several hundred thousand Swedes that are, have used these certificates issued for the citizens of its certificates. And it's a consortium of banks that are, have taken the, most of these uh, business. And uh, we, are, we are not very happy with that either, since this means that it's only really, only really one player in this area, and that is not very, very nice. In, in the beginning, I was also very upset with the fact that the procurement was done for file stored certificates and that you were expected to sit at home and fill in your tax return, but you couldn't use it when you came to the university, come to the university and work with our computers, for instance. But since we can use these USB memory things nowadays, I believe this is not such a, there is, this is not a reason to be upset about. And Svöpke, our PKI, it still has its role, and, but it, not the role that I had thought it should have in the beginning. It's running since February uh, 2001, and it's used mainly for server certificates, and it is a club. We are only five members up to this point, and that, of course, is a very, 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 very disappointing. We have around 40 higher education institutions, some of them very small with just a couple of tens of employees like the higher education institution for dancing, for instance. So some of them are, are very small, and they perhaps are not so surprising that they are not into this business. But we have 15 universities, and of them there, are, there is only four that is members. The, first, the fifth member is the is SUNET, the, the National Research Network. And what, has, what is happening is that some of us will probably act as certificate service providers to, to, to the other, the other uh, higher education institutions. And what they have to do then is to write a certificate pr practice statement. And uh, it, it has to become, in some way, become easier to write this certificate practice statement, since even understanding what it says is, is too high a, an obstacle to become a member. And uh, what you really have to do if you are using another institution as a certificate service provider and you should, should, should write the certificate practice statement, you only, more or less only have to change the name of the provider institution for your own name. And you have to describe how you uh, register requ the requests uh, for, for, a, for a certificate. But, but that seems to be too difficult. So, and of course we are waiting for, for applications that demands that we have this in place and there are some coming up and 
we have, for instance, now uh, developing a national, new national system for, for uh, admitting students to, to universities. And that is a distributed system which, which require that the, the local parts of local uh, components of these are members of, of SUPKI. So it will probably, we will probably be more members in a couple of years, but it's anyhow disappointing. So the situation is then that we have a citizen certificate that we can't afford to use. And uh, it's, uh, we, could, we could say that some of these, uh, or one or two of these certificate service providers that are, has been both, was procured by the government have another business model. There you pay one sum per year to, to get this, this, this service and you have pay per certificate instead of per, per, per check in the revocation list. So these, these uh, providers would be possible to use, but it's rather sad to say to a student that comes to us that you have the wrong type of electronic identity. You, you need to have one from this certificate service provider. Then we end up with this pile of cards in your back pocket anyhow. So that, that's not uh, really not accept acceptable. And uh, we have made the government aware of this, and as I said, they were kind of surprised that the tax authorities have not solved our problem. They, uh, the tax authorities have uh, reported back to the government that they are finished with this business, and we, we now have a national electronic identity, and we can move on from there. But, but uh, they will probably either, the government will issue the, give the task to another, governmental authority or they will be, have, be asked to continue their work. What, what, that, what actually happened was that four of the large governmental authorities, the one for the, the working with patents, with, with property and with pensions and with taxation, they, they, they uh, gathered in a group and, and uh, solved their own problems and they didn't ta take any notice to us the other was that protested, and I know that some in some of your countries the universities are not state-owned and so on. But we are rather large governmental authorities. When it when if you count, for instance, a number of employees, I seem to remember that that my colleague at Lund's University says that this is, the Lund's University is the fourth largest governmental authority in Sweden, and that is one university only. So it's really we really. Or together we are really a rather a large part of the, the author governmental uh, authorities. And what, is, what, what will happen then? And I know that, as I said, that the government will, will uh, give somebody the added task to solve our problems as well. And uh, since we are bound by the law for public procurement, we also have to renegotiate the deals every third or fourth year, which means that it's time now to do this procurement from the beginning again. And we, that, that's another problem. We could end up with another set of service providers, uh, the, the, another set than we previously had. And that, of course, is also bothers, uh, is a problem since we have to change the information in our systems and rely on other service providers. But the, the, the good thing now is that it, we, we can make sure that this procurement will work from a, with another business model. And I'm quite sure that, that the result will suit us better this time. And we have, uh, if, if that means that we have solved the problems of electronic identities for the citizens, uh, remains to be seen, of course. But, but at least we can afford to, probably we can afford to use the ones that are issued. So, so this, is, this is our road forward. I think that was perhaps the next, last, next book. Lower. And the other question is, what, what, how we, can we use this technology then? And we have had this in place for a couple of years, but it has been rather slow in adoption pace. So will it take off? And I, I believe so. I, 
I have received man, more inquiries from, from system owners, basically, and potential members also of Swupki in the last three months than I have during the previous two years. So I think there is, there is something happening in Sweden now with the use of PKI or, or certificates and public key technology. And we also get, we haven't earlier had any requests for person certificates, but now we get requests for that for, for test purposes. And for instance, we have a request for the special, specialist users of our, our new IT systems. And they, what they want to do is to sign things like, like ex exams for students and things like that. And there is a discussion on exactly the same type as we heard Peter tell about here. How, we, how do we, can we check that the validity of a, of a document from the student record system years afterwards? And it will, I believe it will be in the same way as, as he described, that you, you kind of signs that you have verified the signatures and you file that somewhere, somehow, in an archive. And one question then is, who shall standardize these archives for signed certificates, or signed signed. Uh, uh, verifications of signed documents. I believe that there is a need for a, a standardization in this area, but if you look at the standardization organizations at hand, I, probably I, IETF will not take up that. There was, it was a short discussion about that on the last IETF, and there was very definite opinions that this was not IETF's business. So whose business is it, then, is, is, is what I wonder. Is. Um, so, and another thing that, that themes seems to have been being work, working better is, is the, the uh, standard software that uses these, these uh, certificates. I think they, I believe they, they seem to be working better. And we have, only if it goes on, if you continue to think about the smart card business, there was a, a project in Finland a couple of years ago that, that done, did some pilot tests on on smart cards and the re report we received from them was that they had problems with the card readers and with the uh, incompatibilities between different cards and so on and now just a couple of weeks ago I heard another report from a, a new project in Finland and there was no report, uh, no, no, nothing said about these problems but now the problem was how should the application use it that in, in, a, in as good way as possible. So there seems to be the case that we have passed the, the, the situation where the, uh, there are incompatibilities between card readers and, and, and cards. So uh, perhaps it will be easier to deploy uh, systems working with uh, smart cards as well. At least I believe it will. And then, of course, there is the general uh, issue then, our systems, when will they, will they be adapted for the use of authentication and authorization services based on PKI? And that will take time, of course, we, I believe, of course, uh, or, or the systems that are of the more traditional business systems will probably not, for the, during the, their lifetime, have support for authentication and authorization services that are separated from these systems. Uh, other than in some some cases, so it will be a long process, even if it seems like it's as, as far as I understand, it's taking off. So I think we will, uh, even if I have worked with this only uh, for for five years, and I thought it would be done in much less than that. I believe I will have to continue to work with it for another five years before ten or fifteen or whatever. I don't know. It seems to be. A lot, a lot to do, but I, I think that we should make real efforts to take advantage of the, the, the progress that has been made. And I believe that the government can help in these issues, and we trust them. If, if perhaps not with the username it's impossible with ev to every system, but at least to some of them. Thank you. Do we have any questions for program? Some of us believe that 
What's made PKI hard, among many other things, is that we wanted to have it do too many things. And so certainly when one combines web authentication with signed email and, and encryption, um, one gets a, um, a set of different requirements. And so I think for what we're planning on doing, at least in the U.S., is focusing on just using PKI initially for one purpose, and, and that's probably signed email, yeah. and then um, moving up from that slowly. But we, we have solutions for other kinds of authentication. We have no solutions for signed email other than um, PKI. Do you have a set of priorities among, I mean, if you were going to use PKI for just one or two purposes, what's most important to you? Signing documents. I mean, it must, perhaps not only email, but as I said, excerpts from our student record system as well. And, but signing email is important. You have to be, be able to rely on the, where, where the email comes from, for instance. That's, that seems to be a high priority. We can't, we, we aren't allowed to carry out governmental authority issues, I don't know what you call it, but official business we, we, as, as it stands. And we do it anyway with some kind of three-way ha three handshake thing that you, you send the letter and you ask, did you send this letter? And I said, okay, I did. And then you are happy with that in some, in some uh, business. But of course, we need to have signed email. That shouldn't be too difficult to solve either. Any other questions? Do we have any questions for any of our speakers? Thank you, sir. Thanks. Questions for any of the other speakers or not? Well, I'd like to take the opportunity to ask a question of Lynn. Um, Athens seems to be in an interesting position of being a web content aggregator providing a service. Yes? No. No? So, I mean. You don't have the content, but you're an aggregator. You, I go to you to get to other things. OK, so it's a matter of terminology. Um, so you're in that position, which is arguably being a web content provider. Okay. But at the same time, you also want to be providing identity. So you want to be a shibboleth origin as well. Yeah. So what problems does that present maybe politically? Um, in terms of what service you're providing, should you be in the identity management business? Is there any concern about that within the UK? Or well, when we've had some discussions from the UK government to say, would Athens be interested in being an identity provider for them? But we're kind of steering away from that. We don't. We wish to be neutral. We don't want to be seen as in anybody's back pocket. So small institutions that are not in a position to do their own identity management would come to you? Well, you see, what we, have about, what we have about the user, the individuals, is only their username and password and the fact that their, their enterprise has vouched for them. Having other information about them, we don't have particularly. And you don't even have something that binds that individual back to something at the institution? Really? We don't enforce it. Interesting. We plan to. Okay. Um, I guess that given the uh, plenary session was also about middleware, um, I'd also like to open it up to any questions to Ken since he's in the room, um, given what both Ian and Ken were talking about in terms of the potential impact on global middleware. How does this affect? not just the American community, but the European community as well. Um, trying to do a job of evoking some discussion here. So I know there's people here who like to ask questions like Peter and Ingrid and others, so I'm hoping that you will help. It's not working. <laughs> Is everybody really just hungry and they want to get out of here? Okay, that's the Thank you all very much. Don't forget, 2 o'clock is the next session. Enjoy your lunch.